when I was a little kid, I could sit in the classroom, sit in my bedroom, sit in a park, somewhere alone, and rehearse every moment of rejection, rehearse every hurt feeling, every time I felt mistreated or was mistreated, bullied and picked on. And once I began rehearsing it in my mind, I could see it playing out. And as I saw it playing out, all the feelings that occurred in my emotions at the time that it actually happened would be just as fresh as if I were reliving it in that moment. Now, listen to this. I would concentrate on it so much that the tears would well up. And before I knew it, I would be crying. Then next thing you know, I would be wallowing in self-pity and feeling as a, feelings of anger, resentment, bitterness would start growing inside of me instantly because I almost enjoyed feeling justifiably hurt. All right, let's stop right there and let's go into this word from Webster because I want to op help I want to help open our eyes. We need to see ourselves. The more we see what's really going on in here, the quicker we can get healing from God. All right, here we go. You want to hear something even more crazy, more bizarre than that? When I was in my 20s, teens and 20s, you know I never stopped that behavior. One of the things that happens when you feel empty, when you have no real vision for your life, when you have no real connection with God, you're trying to believe in him maybe, or maybe you don't believe at all. But either way, there is an emptiness there. And with the emptiness comes a feeling of uselessness and, and doldrum almost. Now, what happens when we get bored? We stimulate ourselves, don't we? You know, sometimes the only stimulus we can draw from is past emotional pain or present emotional pain. And there are times that rehearsing and regurgitating, replaying and retelling the pain to ourselves beats being bored, empty, and alone. These are, these are weird things that we do with ourselves. I'm guilty of it. The Lord delivered me from it once I got saved, but I still had to go through the process of healing, inner healing. Ah, there's so much I want to say, and I'm trying not to weigh you out. I'm breaking this up in little segments so you know where I'm going. I was looking up some words because I always like to get as much understanding as possible. And down through the years, God has enabled me to understand myself in areas I wasn't even aware of until God opened my eyes to my own emotional crippleness. Now, there are two segments to this that I'm looking at. One I'm not going to define in depth. I'm just going to give a paraphrased definition. And that is the word masochism. Masochism is a form of self-inflicted pain. I'm not going to say what it's all associated with, but where one gets a certain amount of gratification from feeling pain, from inflicting pain on oneself, from conjuring up painful emotions. Now, moving to self-pity. This is deep. And maybe you can look at it, and if you see any of yourselves in it, ask God to heal you. It's as simple as that. When the healing process begins, it may take years, but at every level, 
that God heals you, it's healed permanently. Listen, self-pity. Self-pity is an emotion in which one feels sympathy, sorrow, and pity toward the self in regards to one's own internal and external experiences of suffering. Self-pity has also been defined as an emotion directed towards others with the goal of attracting attention, empathy, or help. All right, let's move on down here. The feeling of self-pity typically arises when an individual attributes failure to external factors perceived as uncontrollable. Although the primary focus of self-pity is on the self and one's own emotions, it has a strong interpersonal component as well. In addition to loneliness, subjects may also feel envy, blame, anger, and hostility directed towards others. However, it is also common for some people suffering from self-pity to deflect criticism of themselves. They are usually incapable or not too great at self-reflection and blame their bad situations on an external factor such as bad luck or other people's supposed resentment. Self-pity is different from self-compassion, which consists of extending compassion to oneself in cases of failure or general suffering. Wow, this is crazy. The research, these are the effects. The research based on observation on self-pity is very slim, but the research that's available shows that self-pity can be an effect from a stressor of a dramatic event, like a, uh, a traumatic situation. That's me throwing that in. It can also be shown that aspects of one's personality can have an effect of one's self-pity. This can also be combined with antagonistic views against others as their pity to themselves becomes jealousy to the people around. Although others initially respond to self-pity with empathy and concern, the interpersonal effects of frequent expression of self-pity can be detrimental. Individuals that engage in pervasive self-pity may be more likely to be rejected by their peers and may commonly be perceived as querulous or complainers. While looking into the science of psychology, the personalities that mostly respond to experiencing self-pity are moody, and most likely experience feelings of anxiety, anger, loneliness, etc. In other words, people that are unable to self-regulate are more likely to have self-pity for the mo for most of their lifespan. The focus of where self-pity could rise could come from their past failings or losses, and as the result, could break down the mind of a person. These people in question could repeat the cycle and continue to beat themselves down to further their pain. Wow. Almost sounds intentional. That's strange. Okay. Treatment. As self-pity is observed to be associated with rumination and avoidance, coping strategies, it is an important emotional experience to acknowledge in therapeutic settings. When someone goes through the effects of self-pity, it has been that these effects can be subsided if one were to think of happy thoughts hmm, during the process. It could be beneficial to them and reduce further harm. With the research that is given, it is possible that it can be used to prescribe and tell the difference between a person with anxiety and a person with depression with how 
one could deal with self-pity, one could treat their ailment by finding some sort of relief and grow away from further pain. Wow. Hmm. Well, all right. Pat's two cents. I found from personal experience, because I'm not an expert, <laughs> I'm first to admit that, that what you focus on, what you zero in on, grows. It zooms. It enlarges itself. It magnifies. Now, the more it magnifies, guess what? The more it hurts. The more you focus in and zero in on it and dissect it, the more pain you will suffer from. The more pain you suffer from, the more disillusioned and depressed you get. The more discouragement piles on top of you. So one might think, well, let's change the channel. And if you're not able to change the channel willfully, it might be good to get involved with other people's problems. Because when you deal with other people's problems and you minister to other people and pour yourself into others who are hurting a lot more than you, you tend to forget all of the woes that were just recently getting you down. All right, I'm gonna stop there. I'm saying this in love because I know there are many that deal with this and there are some folks I know that deal with it. And it's not an attack. If you could just see this as a love offering, this is not an attack. Sometimes we need help understanding ourselves. And if we think we got it all ironed out and it all makes sense and we got all the ABCs, we know how to spell it, we know how to define it, we get it. Trust me, when God gets through with you, you find out just how much you really didn't get. Ask me how I know. So it behooves you to explore and to ask God for inner healing and deliverance. And while you're receiving ministry from God and God's people, pursue the act of ministering to other people with problems you can't even relate to so that you change your focus from looking within to looking without and being aware of what other people are going through. Then your anger and frustration may slowly change into gratitude and satisfaction. God bless you.